Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming. We're gonna go ahead and get started. But before we do that, um, I know everybody knows a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about tonight, um, fascia and stretching. Is there anything in particular that you would like to walk away with? Anything, no pain. <laughs> no pain. So if somebody wants to walk away with no pain. Unfortunately, I think the only way to get that is death. <laughs> but how about how about the ability to come out of pain whenever you start to recognize that you're in it? How about that? We <laughs> okay. could definitely do that. Okay. Anybody else? No? All right. So for everybody out in Zoom and Facebook land, I am Dr. Tad, and you are watching Organic Living Chiropractic. And today we're going to talk about a trauma and stress relief using the fascial system. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen over here. There we go and get this started. So we are talking core fascial release. Um, now, if you, uh, at, at the end of this, we are going to go through this entire routine and everybody's gonna get to feel it. And if you're watching in um, digitally, go ahead and follow along. But if you stick around after that, I'm gonna share my experience with this because um, it has wildly affected my life. It has been probably one of the most, uh, one of the biggest things that's impacted my relationship with my body and my life other than chiropractic and getting adjusted. So stick around uh, at the end um, and we are going to go ahead and I'll share that with you. So this is about improving every aspect of yourself. And that's kind of a big claim. But once you start to really recognize what fascia is and how amazing it is, you'll understand why it is every single aspect of your entire of yourself. So first off, I always like to start with the why. Like, why in the world would I do any of this? You know, it doesn't always feel good. And I got to take time out of my day. And it takes energy. And I'm gonna have to use willpower to keep up with it. So the benefits, they had better be worth it. And the first time I tried this routine, I was completely blown away. <clears throat> Doing a little bit more research, into what you can improve by improving your relationship with your fascia. Healing is definitely at the top of the list. Sleep, massive improvements on sleep. Whenever your fascia is all bound up, you're not gonna be able to let go. And if you can't let go, you're not gonna be able to drop into ease a restful sleep in order to be able to heal because that's when we do the majority of our healing. Number three is mood. I was blown away by how much this impacts our mood and our emotions, and it's instant. You will notice a drastic shift right in the middle of this. You won't even have to wait for a while. Energy production. It takes a lot of energy to fight ourselves. And if our fascia system is all bound up, if it's not free, if we are not free to ebb and flow, it is extremely energy expensive. Not to mention if you're a bad mood, it's hard to have a lot of energy whenever you're in a bad mood. Um, this one really got me. Um, and I think if we have enough time, it looks like we're gonna have some space. We're gonna play around with this, but trauma release. There is a, uh, in the, the mental health world, there's a phenomenal book called The Body Keeps the Score. And all of the information, everything that we experience is, is encoded in our nervous system. But the way that our nervous system retrieves and activates information is very much based on the shape of our body. And because the fascial system is literally what holds everything together, if our shape is in a particular, is stuck in a particular way, we are going to get stuck in the past, or we will get stuck being excessively focused on the future. So the ability of the fascial system to ebb and flow, although the fascial system doesn't seem to have memory, it can absolutely keep us trapped in our memory by keeping our structure in a very, very rigid place. 
Um, resilience, your ability to be able to handle stress is directly related to how open and relaxed and fluid and flexible you are before that stress comes in. If you're super rigid, you can't distribute the stress of life evenly. If we are very, very rigid and we have an internal, very force, strong force, one outer force is going to meet that internal force and that's where damage happens. So our ability to be able to handle stress, our resilience has everything to do with our fluidity. And the fluidity is very much based in the fascial system. Adaptation, your ability to actually not just be able to handle stress, but to grow from stress. Like I said, it's the nervous system that stores all of our information, but our body has to be able to ebb and flow to access all of that information. So whenever stress and trauma and things that we need to grow from comes in, our body has to be fluid enough to take that in, to learn from it, and then to grow from it. And then last is consciousness. The ability to have awareness is very much based on the fascial system and the fascial system's relationship to the nervous system. So those are what you're going to gain. What are you going to lose? What is going to decrease? Well, number one is pain. <laughs> Myofascial pain is by far the most common um, disruptive condition that we have in our society. This causes more disease and debilitation than just about anything else. And all the things that we do to try to get rid of the pain, they cause pretty much everything else. <laughs> so one way, shape, or form, our myofascial system is very much related to the amount of pain that we hold, both physical, mental, and emotional, by the way. Um, stiffness, fatigue, depression, anxiety, bad habits. Again, if we're stuck in a certain thought loop, doing the same thing over and over again, there's a part of our body that is also stuck in that. So being able to move and ebb and flow out of that makes it so much easier to let go of the bad habits. Brain fog, and like I said before, wasted energy. So what is fascia? Fascia is very much the connection between everything and everything else. It is what penetrates. It is what surrounds. It is what connects. It is what divides everything else. So fascia is our body's basically unified field. Everything is connected to everything else through the fascial system. The fascial system is a liquid crystalline matrix. So you know how you have your LCD TVs, right? Where our body has something very, very similar to that. And the same way that your LCD TV can transmit light, the fascial system actually communicates not only through physical mechanics, but also through light which are which is photons and sound which is called phonons and it communicates instantaneously which means whenever there is an input into one part of your body the entire body knows it instantly we do not have the technology to measure the speed of fascial com communication yet okay maybe it's not instantaneous but it's so darn fast we can't even get there and it is the most likely the structural component of consciousness's ability to connect living matter, okay? See those little strands? See those fibers? One of the most recent and what's gaining a lot of evidence in the realm of consciousness research is what's called the microtubules or the cytoskeleton inside the neurons. And what it is, is these little bitty fibers that get built and they're one molecule thick and they channel water, but it's a very special type of water that's in a, actually a, a fourth stage of water. It's a structured water. And this water has the ability to bring in electrons and um, protons from a quantum state. In other words, particles can pop into existence and pop out of existence. And this popping in and out of existence through these microtubules, which is the, that, that, except for inside of our cells, 
that popping in and out of existence creates a resonance. It creates a frequency. There's like a tone to it. That's your unique tone. That's your unique frequency. Out of all that exists, that's how consciousness knows there is this little point, this little part of itself that is called a you. And it's based on the harmonic resonance of these particles popping in and out of existence inside those microtubules, which again are an extension inside the cell of the fossil system. So you're going to get a really good idea of what the fossil system looks like. And most of what we're seeing right here is the fossil system right up underneath the skin, but you'll learn it goes to a lot more than just that. So we got this really cool video. This I think is about four minutes. Now, th these images are recorded, were recorded of the living human fascia. This shape represents shape. the kind of three-dimensional structure as you can see deeply into the fascia. This is strolling under the skin by Dr. Jean-Claude Guimbertot. When you see the behavior of the fascia under some pressure, you start to understand how it is moving. Watch as the fascia, tendrils of the fascia move. Imagine elasticity, surface tension, flow, and movement. The shape of these quadrahedrons are multi-layered. Look at this. Amazing. The elasticity is the first component. Obviously, it can move and stretch, but also notice how the fibrils can move along another fibril. His cross-linking is partly normal and partly uh, abnormal, partly. But you'll see this free flow. Look at this. See the way that a tubule of myofascia moves in this rendering. Now watch as you see the tendril move along another. Now think of a membrane spreading and splitting. Observe how it separates. Now it can actually rejoin later on. The splitting is what we think of as the myofascial release. This amazing lattice here in this computer depiction, how it is all enmeshed and entwined in a fractal chaos. And here, the rendering of two tubules separating, for instance. See how the fascia is in constant motion, responding to our every movement, allowing every flexibility of the tissues, movement of muscles, movement of the body, joints, everything articulating and allowing this free movement. Watch again as it separates. Now, there is this conduction, this idea of the tubule as it conducts water. See this? As the water passes through a tubule of myofascia. Amazing. This is just to give you an idea of how the body in constant motion is responding to the myofascial release as performed by, by a therapist as they help you to release this cross-linking. Look at this area of densely packed fascia. This is the structure of life. Microvacuoles, pressure changes, areas, pockets of fluid. Amazing how much we are water, how much we are 
space in this free movement of a human being. This is life at its very core. The spreading, releasing, rejoining. Unbelievable. But this is the core. Thank you so much. So, like he said in that video, this movement is very much based on water. It's very much based on being hydrated. But it's more than that because in the for have this this tissue's ability to flow like that, but yet maintain a structure where water can't do that. That's where it has to do with the ionized particles. It's magnetic water basically. And this magnetic water can either pull things together or it can push things away. It can literally create space between things or it can hold things together. Now, when we get all bound up, we dehydrate and we may be drinking enough water. We may not have enough water into our system, but if that water can't hydrate those tubules, if it can't help to expand and if it can't, can't ionize and this is one of the reasons that we would want to do something like a uh, Epsom salts or a magnesium bath to get our body more ionized, then this tissue is basically, instead of all those fibers kind of coming together to create that three-dimensional structure, right? They're going to kind of like bind up together. And it's just going to be like this woven cloth that's going to hold things together and not let anything pass through. Now, this tissue, again, is surrounding every cell of our body, but also penetrating every cell come on there we go so what is fascia the latest definition is fascia is any tissue that contains features capable of responding to mechanical stimuli the fascia continuum is the result of evolution of the perfect synergy among different tissues. So this is how all the cells of our body literally work together. And it comes from a perfect state. It's the perfect synergy between different tissues, between liquids and solids. That's one of the amazing things about fascia is it has the ability to go from a liquid to a gel all the way to a solid. It can literally change states depending on how much stress is placed on it, okay? It is capable of di supporting, dividing, penetrating, feeding, and connecting all the regions of the body. So anytime that we have this fascia bound up, not only are our cells gonna be stuck, not able to move, but they're literally not gonna be able to be nourished because the nourishment to our cells actually comes through the fascial system. This continuum co constantly transmits and receives mechanometabolic. Mechano means force as well as energy, the ability to use energy. Information that can influence the shape and function of the entire body. These tissues Okay, and this list right over here, it really, it would have been much nicer if I would have put the tissues that are not fascia. <laughs> What's not fascia is the major organs of our body, the glands of our body, and the cells of the nervous system. <laughs> Just about everything else is fascia. The dermis and epidermis, that means the skin and the up underneath the skin, the fat is fascia, the blood and lymph are fascia, the lymphatic vessels and the blood vessels, so your means your veins and your arteries, those are all fascia, the tissue covering around your nervous system, the myelin sheath that get, makes your nerves function at a much higher capacity, the voluntary muscle fibers, I didn't know this, I didn't know muscles were actually fascial tissue, and the tissue covering and permeating around the muscles, as well as the ligaments, the tendon, what's called the aponeuroses. Everybody's heard of their IT bands. That's an aponeurosis, the thoracolumbar function. These really thick, thick bands of tissue that we like to get the foam roller out for. 
Um, cartilage, like what's in our ears and what's in our nose, our bones are actually fascia. The meninges around the nervous system that holds the nervous system to the skeleton and our tongue is actually fascia. And we're going to get into this a little bit because you're going to notice these, a lot of these fascial stretches that we're going to do today, they actually do involve the tongue. Does it communicate with the nervous system? It absolutely communicates with the nervous system. It's not, but it's not, the nervous system is not made up of when you're connected to it. The, this, the fascial system penetrates the nerve cells, but it, this is not a living cell. Like the nervous system is made up of individual living cells. Cells make the fascial system, but the fascia itself is not a living cell. It's just what supports the life function of the living cell. So how, what are the basic <laughs> principles that we need to know if we want to turn anything into a fascial stretch or a fascial maneuver is number one, it's whole body. Our fascia has no beginning and no end. This is one of the reasons why we've had so much trouble studying fascia before this. Uh, fascia wasn't even considered like a, you know, a body part until fairly recently because you can't take it out of the body. And that's how we study things. We get this dead body and we're like, oh, there's this big chunk over here. I'm going to take it out. But you can't take out the fascial system because it holds everything together. If you were to take out the fascial system, you just have this big soup of a person. So the fascia has no beginning and no end. So anything that you're doing is affecting the entire body. So keep this in mind. When you're doing a fascial stretch, you want to make sure that you're consciously engaging the entire body and not just one particular area. Although one particular area will affect the whole thing, right? If you really want to get the benefit to one particular area, start with the whole thing. There's three basic sections. Even though the fascia can't really be divided up, you can think of the body and, and with the way that you're moving in three different pieces. And in the stretches, you'll notice we're going to use these three different sections differently. The first section is going to be the head and the neck. The second section is going to be the torso, okay? And the third section is going to be from the pelvis down. These are the three basic sections. And in the body... The fascia is really about pressure balance. I used to think that when the body moved, it was based on muscles and it was kind of like a pulley system where the muscle would tighten and it was just cranking tighter, 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 and it would pull it. I was wrong. The muscles do do that, but the muscles are backed up and supported by a hydraulic system, and that is the fascial system. You saw those fibers like being filled with water. These, this fascial system, just as the muscular system contracts and pulls, the fascial system expands and it presses upon. So if we have a certain area of bound up fascia in our body, right, not only because it's all connected, is it going to affect everything else, but the pressure in other areas is going to be affected by that fascial adhesion. So when we're moving, we want to balance out the pressure between these three sections. Now, you don't have to think about how to balance it out, but you just want to make sure that each one of these sections is involved so that the pressure can be balanced out throughout the entire body so that when the body needs to pump or it needs to expand, right? It's going to be able to access that rather than just having to pull on just one area. Number two, number three is the key is slow right? Fascia is like a liquid gel. It is very, very slow moving. And so we want to honor that whenever we're doing fascial work. We don't want to go fast. Fascia has this very interesting principle where the harder you hit it, the quicker it stiffens up. So we want to slowly and steadily hold these pressure differences. Okay. And ideally you kind of want to set a baseline. Anytime that you're doing kind of a fascial stretch, you want to hold it for at minimum about six breaths, right? That's the amount of time typically that it can take for the fascia to be able to expand or to creep into a more expanded position. Relaxed. 
this is not pushing ourselves. This is letting ourselves settle in. This is allowing the expansion. Okay. You can squeeze contraction, but how do you expand? It's all about letting go. So one of the keys to working with fascia, especially, is it has to be relaxed. This is not about straining or efforting. This is about holding, being, letting go, and allowing the expanse. Okay, balanced. Everything in the bot in the fascial system is about balancing the pressure out. So we really want to make sure that we're activating our core, right? And we're getting a sense of balance within this, which is finding where is that calm center that I can really relax on? Where's that center of balance that I can find that gives me the best ability to relax and let go and feel the expansion, okay? We're going to do, be doing a lot of cross the midline, okay? This is not only for the fascial system, but this is a phenomenal way to get both hemispheres of the brain to activate together. This is another reason I love this specific routine is because there is a lot of cross the midline, and I've gone ahead and I've added in some functional neurology to get the eyes to help out with that a little bit more. Okay. And the last part of this is that the fascial system, as with the body, is not symmetrical. It looks symmetrical. There is a lot of closeness to symmetry, but it's not actually symmetrical. We are not symmetrical beings. We do not live in a symmetrical world. It's okay to do things with one hand more than you do with the other one, thankfully. So you're going to notice in some of this, we're going to do things more in one direction or to one side than we will to the other side or the other direction. And that's just to honor this natural asymmetry that the fascia is laid out in okay and what are you supposed to feel with this i am a big proponent for anybody that's known and been adjusted what's the thing that i'd ask you to do right after your adjustment you get off the table feel what's different okay you have to know what you're feeling or what you're trying to feel for otherwise you're just going through the motions Right. And what's worse than going through the motion, spending your energy, but not yet, not really getting a gain back. So the key to this is really paying attention and feeling this. Everybody is different. If you get the feeling, you're there. It doesn't matter what shape your body's in. It doesn't matter how far of a stretch you've gone. If you feel it, you're there. Honor it recognize that be with it relax into the fact that you are feeling it so the first thing that we want to be feeling okay is called the pelvic lock all right and i'm going to be repeating this a lot because what this is going to do is this is going to ground the body ground the fascia but from the inside okay as we move everything around that balance center so the pelvic lock the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to squeeze your intrinsic muscles as if you're going, as if you're holding back, going to the bathroom. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Everyone pucker. All right. The next thing that you do while you're holding that pucker is you're going to take your pubic bone and you're very gently going to pull it towards your belly button. And you're going to take your belly button and pull it towards your spine. Okay. Everyone squeeze those muscles, pull the pubic bone up, pull the belly bone back. Do you feel that solid center? Okay, that's it. Everything that you're going to be doing is going to be revolving around your ability to get to that solid center. And it's not really solid, it's fluid, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. Now, during this, the goal is to keep that pelvic lock the entire time. Okay, that's not going to happen. Okay, just abandon all hope right now. All right, that's the goal. None of us are going to make it there. And that's okay. Every time that you re-engage that pelvic lock, you're not only giving your fascial system a reason to ebb and flow and to move, but you're also engaging your brain in a new way. So think of this like a weight ramp, right? If you just hold that weight, okay, great. But if you actually do reps, you're going to get some benefits. You're going to get a lot of benefits. So it's okay to forget about the pelvic lock. 
Okay. It's okay to not be able to hold it and to be able to lose it. Okay. Just compassionately and curiously, when you remember it, bring it back into connection. Okay. Lock it back up again. And I'll be saying it a lot throughout this video. Okay. We already talked about that center line. We're going to talk a little bit more in just a minute, but borders and boundaries. Fascial stretching is not like muscular stretching. We're not trying to get as much movement as we possibly can. What we want to do is we want to go to the border right there. Okay. If I go any farther, I'm going to be straining, but there's the border at which I can move. And it just feels like there's this boundary. And if I'm going to go past that, I'm going to have to effort. So I'm going to stay at this border. I'm going to stay at this boundary. And as I relax, I'll start to notice that I'm actually able to go a little bit farther without straining. And then I'm able to go a little bit farther. So fascial stretching is about coming to the border, coming to the boundary, not blasting through it, but staying with it until it changes, until it melts, until you're able to go a little bit farther. And then you follow it. One of my teachers kind of told me that it was kind of like sticking your hand into a bucket of sand, right? If you just jam your fingers in there, you're going to hurt yourself. But if you slowly and steadily push, that sand's going to start to move out of your way and you're going to be able to go deeper and deeper and deeper into it. It's the same thing, slow, steady, feeling the borders, feeling the boundaries and waiting to melt through them. Your breath is just as important as the actual movements. Your breath is actually an entire body movement. Okay, you can measure inhale and exhale from toes to nose. It is one of the only completely full body activities that we do on a very consistent basis. And so we're going to use it since it's there. So we're going to get ourselves into these positions. And while we're playing with that border and boundary, we're going to bring in the movement of breath to accentuate us playing with the border and boundary. Now, there's different kinds of breath in the nose and out the nose is gonna have a tendency, and if you pay it to close enough attention, you'll notice this, it kinda of has a tendency to affect more of the upper part of the body, okay? The in the mouth and out the mouth, if you really pay attention, it'll actually have more of an effect. You'll be able to feel it more towards the lower part of the body, okay? There's gonna be in the nose and out the mouth, and then there's gonna be this very special pumping breath, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna inhale three times fully, and then you're going to exhale and you're going to do that kind of through pursed lips, like you're sucking through a straw. And you'll see when we go through the video, it, it explains it really well, but it's kind of going to, going to kind of be like a, to get as much as you can, and then you're going to let it out. Okay. I, we already talked about the goal here is not pushing. It's actually softening. The goal here is not straining and elongating. It's actually melting into a more expansive place. And progress is key. And that's why you have to pay attention, okay? To find that border and find that boundary, right, is great. But if you don't notice how that boundary is starting to progress, you're not going to be able to melt with it. So what we want to do is we want to find these borders and boundaries, but our goal is progress, but not through effort, not through straining, but through melting, through softening, and through awareness. So I brought this in just as a little bit of an illustration to talk about the core of our core and why it's so important to really pay attention to this. And once you get the sense of it, you'll notice it's actually very slippery. It's really hard to get a, a, a solid ground of it because it is fascia. It is fluid, right? But in whenever we're developing in utero, sometime between the third and fourth week, our bodies form just like up here in the far uh, upper left corner, they form what's called this neural plate. And it's a very, very thin layer of cells, okay? And it flattens out. And after about the third week, that flat plate starts to kind of curl up and it starts to form this tube that fully forms closer to the six week of gestation. Now, the outside of that tube Okay, right over here, this is going to be the outer portion of our body, our skin, our muscles, our organs, our nervous system. Okay, but this inside right over here, this is actually going to end up being our digestive tract. 
So we start off as this flat sheet and then we roll around ourselves and we have this tube on the inside, right? And around the six week of gestation, okay, this tube starts to kind of zip up over here at the bottom and it zips up right at the bottom. And that bottom part is the very end of our digestive tract. And humans are what's called uh, deuterostomes, deuter deuter which means we form the end of the digestive tract all the way up. So at a certain stage in your development, you were only an asshole. <laughs> and some people don't ever get past that, but we're not those people. So we're going to move on and we're going to go through the full stage of development. Okay. But that core, right? That very, very center tube is really what we're going to be focusing on. And everything is going to be moving around that as we twist and turn and pull on that core. Okay. So kind of think of your body almost like a tree trunk. And it's made up of these concentric rings. But instead of being made of wood, those concentric rings are made of webbing. They're made of this, these fossil kind of spider web type of tendrils. And those tendrils can move and shape, but it is very much of a concentric forming from the inside out. Okay, so whenever you're really feeling like that, you'll hear me say it, pay attention to that very slippery core. And that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like you have this like spider web type tube and it twists and it gets more dense, but yet at the same time, it's very fluid. It's very flexible as you try to find it and let yourself rest and settle over it. This is what your core is like. And like I said, you'll start to feel it. So before we get into the actual exercise, I just want to give a shout out to this organization because this organization is what cued me into this unique way of addressing the fossil system. They're the ones that came up with the basic exercises. I highly recommend checking out Human Garage um, on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Everybody's here that's here. There's going to be a sign up sheet um, at um, the very end. And if you put your email down, I'm going to send you an invitation to their community to do their challenges. They have a one-day challenge. They have a three-day challenge. They have a seven-day challenge, and they have a 27-day challenge. Now, these pictures right here in the 27-day challenge, part of it is what they do is they get people to take pictures of themselves before and afterwards. These are the same people. The ones on the left are before the challenge. The ones on the right are after the challenge. And the, the challenge is every single day, can you move your fascia? Can you move your fascial system? The 20 depth, say seven day challenge um, also involves some very specific supplementation and some Epsom salts baths to really ionize the body, to help the body to move through. Because again, the fascial system is what nourishes everything. So as we start to open the fascial system up, not only are we going to be detoxing a lot of crazy stuff, but some of our cells have not gotten the correct nourishment in a long time. So as we go through this, we kind of want to supercharge our nutrition so that those cells can get access to that nutrition that they've been starving from for, for, for so long. So I really want to give a, 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 just a very heartfelt shout out to uh, Human Garage. Please check them out. Um, if you're watching this or if you're here, um, give me your email either in the comments section um, or we're going to all write it down and I will send you a an invitation and you'll start off with their one day challenge and you'll move to their three day and then their seven day. And then after that, you'll have access to the 27 day challenge. Uh, but again, I cannot, cannot express how much this has impacted my life. So I'm so grateful for this organization. So who's ready to feel it? All right. So what I'm going to ask everybody to do is go ahead and grab a chair and take all the chairs out into the lobby. Um, and uh, you don't have to like stack them in any particular way. Just get them out of the room and um, we're going to just create as much space as we possibly can.
All right, so everybody spread out. You're not going to need too much space, okay? What you're going to need is you're going to need enough space. If you put your hand elbows up like this, you're going to need enough space to be able to turn without hitting hitting anybody, okay? And you're going to need enough space where is if you were going to bow completely down, right? Can you bow completely down without hitting anybody? That's the maximum amount of space that you're going to need, okay? Now, during this, at the end of each one of these exercises, we're going to take a very short break. While you're taking a break, you're going to tune in and see what's different about your body. And the best way to do that is just a little bit of a cross crawl movement. Okay. Just moving one opposite arm and opposite leg. Okay. And you can take a couple steps around, but that's just going to kind of be the best way to just kind of tune in and just see, okay, hey, what did this stretch do for me? All right. So as this is playing, I'm going to be walking around and I'm going to help people kind of get into a position where they can kind of feel it. So this is going to be all the instructions that you need. Engage your pelvic lock and hold it. Squeeze the pelvic muscles as if you're holding back going to the bathroom. Pull the pubic bone towards the belly button and the belly button towards the back of the spine. Take your right leg, cross it over the left. Take your right arm and place it across the body under the left armpit and the left arm across the body on top of the shoulders. Pull the skin tight, settle in, engage your pelvic lock. Relax and unlock the knees. Very gently twist the pelvis to the left and the head to the left, twisting the heart center to the right. With your eyes, look all the way to the right and hold them there the entire time while placing your tongue in your left cheek. Breathe in and out the nose six times while continuing to keep the pelvic lock engaged, letting the body rest over its core. It's okay to relax. It's okay to settle. It's okay to shift and change. Relax the tongue and purse the lips as if sucking through a straw. Inhale three big times, then exhale. Repeat this three different times. while breathing in the nose and out the mouth six times. Twist a little more without straining. Engage the pelvic lock. Relax, settle in. Soften your legs, soften your feet, soften your shoulders. It's just play. It's just exploration. After six breaths, slowly unwind, turn the pelvis to the right, the head to the right, and the heart center to the left. Engage the pelvic lock. 
with your eyes, look all the way to the right and hold them there the entire time while placing your tongue in your right cheek. Breathe in and out the nose six times while stretching the cheek with your tongue. Twist a little more. Head, chest, pelvis. Unlock the knees. Settle in. Re-engage the pelvic lock and twist a little more. After six breaths, purse the lips like you're sucking through a straw. Breathe in three big deep breaths and out slowly after a pause. After the last exhale, breathe in the nose and out the mouth six times. Unlock the knees, wiggle the toes, relax the feet, twist the pelvis a little farther to the right, heart center a little farther to the left, head and eyes a little farther to the right. Unwind slowly. Cross crawl, right arm left leg, left arm right leg. Walk around in a figure eight or straight line for a few minutes. Don't hesitate to pause this video. And do this to stay. Feel what's different. Engage your pelvic lock. Okay, Squeeze the intrinsic pelvic muscles. Pull the pubic bone towards the belly button. Pull the belly button towards the spine. Holding the pelvic lock, take your left leg and cross it over the right leg. And take your left arm and place it under the right armpit and the right arm over the top of the left shoulder. Pull the skin, keep the pelvic lock engaged, settle in, turn the head to the right, chest to the left, pelvis to the right. With your eyes, look all the way to the left and hold them there the entire time while placing your tongue in your right cheek. Breathe in and out the nose six times, twisting a little more, head to the right, chest to the left, pelvis to the right. Drop down, pelvic lock engaged, unlock the knees, breathing, subtly twisting, feeling the barriers and relaxing the body. Purse the lips, suck in three times. <sighs> Exhale. Twist a little more. Exhale. Last time. Hold, twist, exhale. Breathe in the nose and out the mouth six times. Relax the body. Twist a little bit more in all the different directions. Unlock the knees, wiggle the feet, Relax the shoulders, pelvic lock engaged. Relax, unwind to the center, pelvis to the left, head to the left, heart center to the right. Engage the pelvic lock. With your eyes, look all the way to the left and hold them there the entire time while placing your tongue in your left cheek. Breathe in the nose and out the nose six times. Stretching the cheek, turning the head a little more, turning the pelvis a little more, turning the heart center a little more. Engage the pelvic lock. Settle into the knees. Relax the shoulders. Find that slippery center. Purse 
purse the lips. Inhale three times. Exhale. Turning a little more. Last time. Breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Settle in. Twist a little bit more in all directions. Pelvis to the left. Head to the left. Heart center to the right. Twisting. Feeling the tension. Relaxing the body. After the sixth exhale, come back to center, unwind, uncross, move the opposite arm and opposite leg together and cross crawl. Walk around a little bit. What's different now? Pay attention to every part of your body. Don't hesitate to pause this video as you walk around for a few minutes. Feel it, huh? <laughs> Ain't no joke. <laughs> Get settled in, feet shoulder width apart. Engage the pelvic lock. Interlace the fingers with the thumbs touching. Reach behind the head at the bottom of the neck. Pull the skin up towards the head. Look up with the eyes and look up with the head. Inhale through the nose and out the nose six times. Keeping the eyes at the very top of the skull. Keeping the chin stretching towards the ceiling. Keeping the pelvic lock engaged. Prepare to purse the lips Inhaling three times, exhaling. One more. Slowly come back to center with the head and eyes. Lifting the skin to the back of the neck, pull the head and the elbows down. Breathe in the nose three times. Keep the pelvis lock engaged. Settle in. Allow the toes to shift. Breathe in and out the mouth three times. Re-engaging the pelvic lock. Breath. Settle in. Now the twist. Pushing into the ground with the left leg. Twist the right elbow towards the ceiling. Inhale through the nose. Exhale down. Pushing the right heel into the floor. Twist the upper body so that the left elbow moves towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale, elbow to the ceiling, exhale down. Inhale, left elbow to the ceiling, exhale down. Inhale, right elbow to the ceiling, twisting, exhale down. Last time, inhale, left elbow twisting to the ceiling, exhale down. Keeping the pelvic lock engaged, unlock the knees, stick the buttocks as far behind you as possible. Weight on the heels, straight back, look up as high as you can. Inhale through the nose, out the mouth, three times. Engaging the pelvic lock, pushing into the heels. Prepare to purse the lips. Prepare for the twist. 
left leg down, twist the right elbow towards the ceiling, exhale down. Right leg down, twist the left elbow towards the ceiling with the whole upper body, exhale down. Inhale, twist the right elbow to the ceiling, exhale. Inhale, twist the left elbow to the ceiling, exhale. One more time, inhale, right elbow to the ceiling, exhale, inhale, left elbow to the ceiling, exhale. Let's go down. Keep pushing the buttocks backwards and fold as low as you can go. Don't hurt yourself. Be comfortable. Inhale through the nose and exhale three times. Followed by three. Inhale and exhale through the mouth. Keep the pelvic lock engaged. Allow the pelvis to shift. Allow the toes to wiggle. Allow the body to relax. Okay. Keep pushing the pelvis backwards, lifting back and up towards the ceiling, head down. Relax. Engage the pelvic lock. Slowly roll one vertebrae at a time, all the way up through the neck, looking all the way up at the ceiling. Engage the pelvic lock again. Relax, come back to neutral. Allow cross crawl, opposite arm and opposite leg. Walk around, take your time. This one's called really uh, tune in to exactly <laughs> what I mean, feels real different. Weird after this one. <laughs> Pause the video if you need a little more time. Last exercise. Engage the pelvic lock, squeezing the intrinsic pelvic muscles, pulling the pubic bone towards the belly button and the belly button towards the spine. Cross the right leg over to the left. Take the right arm, cross it over, place the hand on the left shoulder, left hand over on the right shoulder. With the thumb, swipe from right to left at the very top of the palate, breathing in the nose and out the nose six times. Love the roof of your mouth. Keep the pelvic lock engaged. Relax the knees. Throw up, you've pushed in too deep. Let the toes wiggle. Relax the ankles. <laughs> Relax the whole body, unwind, re-engage the pelvic lock, Literally take the left leg, in the skull. cross it over the right leg. Take the left arm and place the left hand on top of the right shoulder. Take the right hand and place it on top of the left shoulder. With the left thumb, Swipe the very top of the palate three times from left to right, breathing in the nose and out the nose. Unwind. Come back to center. Re-engaging the pelvic lock, pelvic floor, pubic bone to belly button, belly button back to spine. Again, Take the right leg, cross it over the left. Take the right hand, place it on top of the left shoulder. The left hand on top of the right shoulder. With the right thumb, swipe from right to left across the top of the palate nine times. Breathing in the nose and out the nose. Continue to keep the pelvic lock engaged. Relax. The knees, relax the ankles, relax the shoulders. Find that slippery center, let the body relax. Unwind, cross crawl, walk around, enjoy the changes. And that's it. Yeah. We didn't do the nine on the left. Remember, it's not symmetrical. So what's not it's the fascial system is not symmetrical the way as a matter of fact the people that taught this only did it to the right okay i like to do a little bit in the opposite direction if you know me i like to break the rules just a little bit even though i'll go mostly with it um a lot of it also has to do with the uh 
acupuncture um, principle that six times brings energy in and nine times smooths it out. Mm -hmm. So that's why three times in the opposite direction to kind of shake it up, energize the system, go a little bit opposite. And then it seems to just flow like you're kind of like backing it up a little bit and then letting it go. Okay. I want to know how long it took you to actually layer all that and get it all together uh not that long once like i said once you do their their multi-day challenge uh -huh. you, by the time that you get to the end of their three-day challenge you will have this down okay. it's really just playing with it their videos are very very good um but he does a lot of extra explaining so i wanted to do a video and i definitely recommend checking his videos out for this routine but i wanted to make a video that just walks you right through it mm -hmm. so that once you kind of got the hang of it you didn't have to sit through all of the extra explanations again and again and again and you can just flow through it so i'm going to stop my sharing well actually i'm going to go one more so real quick one of the things that i did not mention because i didn't want to scare anybody mm -hmm. is that there is a lot of emotional release that's going to happen with this okay did anybody feel <laughs> excessively emotional whenever they were doing this did that sense of like hopelessness or this is too much of a challenge or confusion or I don't know what's going on, <laughs> right? These are really simple motions and nobody's grading you. Like if you did it wrong, <laughs> nobody, but yet at the same time, because we're pulling all this stuff, a lot of our anxieties, a lot of our challenges, especially in the emotional realm are going to end up coming up. Now, what I recommend, and you'll see this, I believe on the seven day challenge is there's a trauma release that involves getting into the fetal position immediately after that. And what they call the fetal position is crossing one leg all the way over the other one. And then same thing like this, and just kind of flopping over onto your side in a ball and letting your body melt as much as you possibly can. I was so surprised at how much stuff came up after I had moved around the system and then gotten back into that very, very primal position, it shocked me how much stuff I was holding on. I mean, I do this stuff, stuff like this on a very regular basis. It is daily finding stuff in my system for me. So to, for me to have a big impact like this, like, whoa, I didn't even know I was holding it there. That was incredible. So everybody felt that this huh <laughs> so does anybody want to share a little bit about what they experienced and you don't necessarily have to yeah i feel like i've been like breathed so you could you felt like you could pressure air or something yes different about like a sense of like crispness yes yes, yes. totally <laughs> and then i feel like i came in with a lot of stress and so more crispness in your breathing and the stress that you were carrying is no big deal now. Yeah. I feel more open. More feel more open. Yeah. I feel like hundred degrees. <laughs> we got somebody that says they feel like a hundred degrees. Yeah. So there is going to be a lot of detoxing that happens whenever, whenever we go through this, whenever I first started doing this, I noticed I was sweating on certain parts of my body. Like my left shoulder was sweating and Caroline and I are like, what is this? The rest of my body's not, but this is like dripping what's going on. Because again, we're storing a lot of stuff in certain areas. And once we're opening up and expanding the fascial system, our lymph and our blood is going to be able to flow a lot easier. We're going to be able to detox. We're going to bring nutrients into these certain areas. So yeah, you're going to get lots of very, very strange symptoms with this. Anybody else? There was like this feeling of shame. A feeling of shame. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. I'm not sure what it's about. Right. But it kept coming up and it's, I don't feel it now, but there's, there's like a residue. Exactly. And it's, like, okay, that's something that needs exploring. Right. And the good news about this is you don't 
have to figure it out or explore it. You just have to recognize that that's one of the things that's being bound up with the way that your fascial system is holding your body. It's holding the body in a state of shame. So and I don't have to feel ashamed about you. You don't have to feel ashamed about being shamed and you don't have to figure out how to get rid of it. Because okay. once the body starts to open up, the brain, your nervous system is going to be able to process very differently. We all need to have all experiences, right? We don't need to stay in those experiences. Getting stuck in the experiences is not the problem. We all need shame. Right. That's what helps us to engage with society. Otherwise, you just run around. Was that? You can pass it on to somebody else. No, you don't need to pass it on to somebody else, but you need to feel it whenever you're running outside naked and everyone's telling you you should put your clothes on. That's when you're supposed to feel ashamed. And then you go inside, put clothes on, and then you're supposed to be able to come out of it. But we can't do that if our body gets stuck into a certain shape on a cellular level. You saying we don't have to figure it out released it that's it it's just awareness you got it awareness and being able to move and expand once the body can move and expand it can let go of past trauma it can let go of our bad mood it can let go of the stress we've been holding it can let go of all of it but we have to be able to relax and expand so that our body can literally release it and not hold us in that information processing pattern Anybody else? Okay, so I'm going to challenge everybody before I turn this off. I'm going to challenge everybody to do this one time a day for the next week. Just once a day for the next week. Don't worry about getting it right. Just worry about what you're feeling. Okay, focus on finding that center, focus on finding the borders and boundaries and pushing on them. Every time you do this, you're going to learn a little bit more. And after a little while, you'll be able to do this without the video at all. Okay, but I'm going to send out this video to everybody and just do this for a week. You will be shocked at how many things improve. So that's not the seven day challenge. <laughs> that's not the seven day. This is our seven day challenge. So believe it or not, these are the base exercises. But if you do the human garage, um, there is there's a lot more. I mean, you can get very, very detailed. They have like a um, a, a facelift. Um, where they're stretching the fascia around in the face to get rid of wrinkles and to pull everything. Much. I mean, it's incredible. There's pelvic floor stuff. There's knee and ankle stuff. It's awesome. Um, but this is kind of the foundation of everything. Once you get this down, everything else is going to work a lot better because this is getting to the core of everything in both lateral bending, twisting, but also in flexion extension. Yes. The pelvic bucket, that's just basically like Yes. Yeah. It's very, very important. Um, the Kegels, they are, they're, they're going to be contracting and relaxing that pelvic floor. This is actually engaging a little bit more because you're pulling the belly button towards the spine and the pubic bone towards the belly button. So you're engaging a little, you're engaging everything in that pelvic bowl rather than just the pelvic floor, but the pelvic floor is key to all of this. That's pretty much the foundation to everything. Because again, that's where it all started. That's whenever we first became a three-dimensional being was right at that pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So that's where we want to start. And we want to have everything in that tube down there and move everything around. Is the vagal nerve involved? In it? So the vagal nerve is spread out through the, the entire body. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the position of that vagal nerve, how much tension is being placed on it, whether there's too little tension, that nerve is going to whisper. If there's too much tension, that nerve is going to scream. So by balancing out the pressure around the vagus nerve, you're increasing what's called vagal tone, which is the vagus nerve's ability to have that right hum, that right frequency that's you. And that's based um, on a five hertz frequency. We can go into that a little bit later on uh, when we do our auricular therapy class. Uh, but yes, this is going to mechanically free the vagus nerve so that it's not screaming in some places and whispering in some places and the brain can get. This is one of the reasons that I'm really excited to bring this in is because uh, this combined with some of the polyvagal exercises that I'm going to teach coming up, I think are probably going to be the most impactful things on increasing everybody's HRV scores. 
Anything else? All right. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, hey, Caroline, could you get a, a sign up, uh, a piece of paper out there? And remember, if you put your email down, I'll send out that uh, that invitation to do from from Human Garage for you. But thanks everybody for joining out in Digital Land.